Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors with another Favors Mentoring School topic. And so the topic is essentially do not wait for perfect conditions. It is a biblical um, concept of waiting for perfect conditions. Uh, I think it's in Ecclesiastes. And it's essentially do not wait for perfect conditions. Um, if every farmer waited for every um, cloud, he would not harvest, meaning that if you saw, if you walked outside and you saw, oh, there are the clouds, I can't sow seed, then if you did that every day for a number of months, then you wouldn't have a harvest in 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 a few months, right? So the same can be said or suggested uh, about planning, about uh, planning your transitions in life, um, setting up an emergency savings fund, maybe considering college moving uh, beyond your current state into another state with your career, you could apply this particular uh, statement to many areas of your life. And I usually like to place uh, areas of my life or, or all of our lives into three major categories, and that's academic, professional, and personal. And I note this in multiple, m multiple videos. But I want to say something about waiting for perfect conditions when it comes to finances in particular, especially if you want to look at the um, the consequence of you becoming homeless because you didn't do what you were supposed to do somewhere in your 20s. I have that as my own story, my own narrative. I remember uh, my mother uh, telling me when I was in high school, school and I was working uh, and I was buying clothes because, you know, you can buy your own clothes now. Here it is. I'm a junior and senior in high school. And you know how it, how it is in high school. You want to be popular or, or something like that. Or you want to be at least perceived as being part of the in crowd. And so then you try to look like the in crowd, right? You try to buy what they buy, look how they look. And then, of course, I was working and I wanted to look like something because the type of job that I had was was actually in an office and I had to dress accordingly. So that means that whatever clothes that I wore to school in terms of jeans or or just regular t-shirts or just regular clothing would not work in that environment. So I had to uh, shop, right? I had to buy clothes. I also think about the types of clothes that I was I was buying at that time. There were some clothes that looked like I should be in high school. And then there were some clothes that looked like I should be an adult, like suits and things like that. And the suits, there's nothing wrong with purchasing a suit. But the types of suits that I was purchasing, they were the type that looked like a person who was um, a business owner or executive or, or something like that. And so I was trying to wear clothes that didn't necessarily fit the current state of mind I was in. In some ways, that's not a bad, it's not a bad deal, a bad idea to sort of look forward and, and to envision where you want to become and all that kind of good stuff. But I was still in high school and I still needed to stay within the mindset of high school and plan my transition out of high school. Well, my mother made a comment and uh, and I didn't really take heed to it. Uh, she made the comment that if you continue to buy clothes when you graduate, you won't have any money saved. And she said it in another way, but I had to just kind of simplify it here. And so I did not heed that warning. That was a warning. And so I did not heed that warning. When I graduated from high school, of course, I didn't have any money, had to find a job, had to take any job uh, because I didn't plan well from high school. Uh, I, I just assumed I was going to get into the military. I didn't get into the military, so I didn't plan for college. I didn't plan for uh, a job like internships or something like that. I didn't have the consciousness of that. So uh, when you grow up in uh, a home where college is not necessarily promoted or, or you pushed towards it and you're basically pushed to either get married or get a good job, you don't have the consciousness of other options, right? Because in some ways, you don't think you have those options, even if you didn't voice it. Well, uh, come to, um, uh, I still struggle with money, uh, even when I got out of my mother's house and uh, went a, 
hasty diversion and then ended up getting my own apartment. And then I was still kind of struggling because I was still in the mindset of buying clothes. And, um, and so one day I went crazy and bought a lot of clothes and didn't realize I didn't have my rent. So then I had to go back and return all the clothes. And I was older. I mean, I wasn't older, older. I was probably like 18 or 19 older. And then that taught me a lesson, but it still wasn't enough of a lesson to really get me to understand how important it was to save. Uh, and so then somewhere I started the journey of beginning to pay my credit cards or something. I didn't have many, but I was beginning the journey. I was also beginning the journey of, um, of transitioning from the type of job that I had to now going to college. I was working that job for eight hours a day, and then I would go to school at night. And um, and so I think maybe my journey truly began with addressing the credit card issues, right? At that time, I had a Mervyn's, a, a Foley's, maybe some other card. And so I guess I was struggling to pay them, and I went through a consumer credit counseling service, and then I was able to uh, work out that situation and I was sending them the payments and then they were sending the payments to the company. And it was a very good strategy. I mean, today I wouldn't do that because I have more sense about things, but it was a good strategy as a start. What happened uh, with that strategy, I was, clear, I was uh, very close to paying off two and working on maybe one or two more. I interrupted myself. I interrupted myself by relocating from Dallas to San Diego. Now, was that a good idea because I was trying to go to college and, and I ended up going to San Diego State University? Yes, in terms of trying to move yourself from one place to the next. However, I didn't necessarily have the finances to do so. I had probably one or two paychecks left over. Then I had uh, maybe, uh, what is it? Um, the the deposit from the apartment and some cash. Now I had already sent my rent ahead. I had already visited the place that I was going to move into, and I had already sent my rent ahead. And I had I had my rent for what I um for when I got there, and then of course another paycheck or two when I uh, could pay. Uh, and then I was able to find um a job on a political campaign. It was Senator D Dee Dee Alpert in San Diego. And then I was able to make some money. And then within, I think that was within a week or so. And then within a month, maybe and some change, I was able to find a full-time job with a customer service place. And so then I was, I, I was able to get stable and keep that job for about two, two and a half years until they moved to a location where a bus did not go to the area. And so then I made the decision to go on ahead and just quit working altogether, full-time working, and then commit to college. And college afforded me the opportunity to go on ahead and get um, grants and loans. Now, mind you, I'm still not really in the mindset of financial management, so I'm sort of running on some kind of fumes, fuel, something, right? Um, and so then I was able to take out loans and from college to go to school, and I used that to pay my rent up and 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 I never thought to myself at that time, maybe I should take portion of this money and put it even put it in a savings account and not touch it, okay? So then I'm doing that, and that's going good for a good while. And then um, I'm I'm becoming really too dependent upon loans. So remind you, I didn't finish out the process of um, closing out the credit cards. I had clo I had completed the first two tasks, and I was working on the next two tasks, I interrupted myself, got into other financial issues, even if you could say, well, the the college um, college option was a good bet. It was a good bet, and it's still a good bet, and I'm glad. But I still was not focused on the financial aspect of, of, of being a grown-up. And so then um, I graduated 2002 with the bachelor's. I knew that I wanted to teach, so that, so it made sense to go on ahead and enroll in um, a master's program, which was about two to three years, and I was taking out loans then. 
But when it was time to actually graduate with a graduate degree, I still didn't have a plan, nor that I have a savings plan. So then I'm scrambling. I'm scrambling. I'm scrambling to find work. I'm scrambling to uh, pay rent. I'm scrambling to meet other types of regular life, adult life um, um, obligations. And so then everything began to shut down somewhere in 2006. And so then I couldn't find work. I ended up having to relocate or come back to Dallas, still with no money. And then that sort of began the homeless. Um, I ended up moving in with my mother, found a job here at a community college in Dallas. That went for about two academic semesters. And then the financial recession hit. And then I lost that job. And so from 2008 to 2013, if I got those numbers right, 2008 to 2013, I'm sort of homeless. I'm going back and forth with family, shelters, uh, struggling, no money. I am uh, freelance contracting, writing little articles. This was at the time where everyone was trying to build a website for articles and things like that. And, and I was writing that. I was doing some ghost writing. So I was having some cash coming in, but nothing really to, to sustain me as an adult, right? And so then 2013, the door opened again for me to get back on with my college that I'm still now teaching at. And, uh, and that's when I, and at the time I was living in the Salvation Army shelter, I think. I, I was able to get on program. And that was about, it was one month uh, with that program and then a few, few to five months uh, on program. And then I left that before the time because I figured, well, I got the job. I can go on ahead and just leave and go and, and get a place. The place I ended up getting was a extended stay motel. So in 2013 is when I set the goal to be, to become financially stable. That was the first goal because you can't set any real, you can't set other types of goals until you get yourself um, financially stable. That's why when you are in a state of uh, maybe poverty or or um, just setback, financial setback, don't set the types of lofty goals. I just want to become a millionaire. I just want to become uh, I want to win the lottery or something like that when you don't have the financial wherewithal to sustain that because you can go and win the lottery and lose your money within a year, right? Depending on the type of lottery you have won. So the learning that you need to get is actually much more important. So that was the first goal, 2013. It was somewhere like May or June that I set that goal because somewhere I was tired. I think I was tired. And I didn't want to do this financial roller coaster again. And so I set that goal and 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 I stuck with that goal. I paid bills on that goal. I had to pay some taxes on that goal. Uh, I did not, I don't think I began paying credit card bills. I, I had, I, some time had passed and those previous credit cards had dropped off. So the ones I did pay and the ones I, uh, and the ones I didn't pay dropped off. So I didn't have any uh, credit, I think. And so then I reopened that door to credit, got more credit because I never learned what I needed to learn, got more credit. And then I thought because, and this is, I think I did this when I didn't have a job. Oh yeah. That, oh yeah. That was crazy. And um, because I thought that could sustain me. And then I think I paid some and then those fall, uh, fell off. But when in 2013, between 2013 and I'll say 22, 20, uh, 2022, I was financially stable for the first time. Now, I still got some more credit cards, but I learned a valuable lesson because then I was paying them and paying them at the full balance. And I didn't and I kept a few. I didn't have a lot. And then the pandemic happened and then I was out of work again. And so that was between 21 and 22. Uh, and so I was able to return to work fall 2022. Uh, and so then um, that was sobering because a pandemic shut down everything to the point that you couldn't work. And so that really gave pause. So the goal that I set to be financially stable 
that is a goal that I actually completed because I didn't hop from place to place. I lived in the extended stay from 2013 till about November 2022. And I didn't hop from place to place. I paid bills. I pay, I, I made sure to treat the place right. Uh, I came back and forth, work and things like that. And so that goal I did accomplish. The next goal, uh, once I was able to get my job back from pandemic, and this time I'm working full time, um, now I am able, and this is what, I'm 48 as, as now. This is... Um, May 30th, and I'm 48, and my birthday is um, in December, and so uh, I will be 49. It took literally almost to 48 years old to really have an understanding about savings. I did have an understanding about becoming financially stable from 2013 to 2022. But it should not have taken to 40, uh, to my late 30s, to my from from 38 till about 48 to get an understanding about savings. There has been so many uh, opportunities to be in that mindset, but I got distracted with uh, friends and family. I got distracted with credit cards. I got distracted with wants versus needs. I, and in some ways, I got distracted with college. I got to college, whereas when I was working prior to college, I was actually much more responsible. I had, uh, in terms of financially, there were some issues, but I, I kept that apartment. I wasn't evicted from that apartment while I was here in Dallas during that time. So I was actually much more responsible. When you got to college, when you get to college, you do get very comfortable you know you have to do schoolwork. You know you have to, you may have like a little job on campus. Like I worked tutoring. I worked other little jobs. I was a, a TA, a teacher's um, associate having my own classes. And so you do get used to that world. And you don't really always plan from that world. And it depends on the major. Some majors already have it built in where there are internships, where there are, there are, network connections to companies, things like that. And some majors, you have to find your own way. There may be a few built-in opportunities and activities that are just expected and obvious. So if you want to become a teacher, then you would have to serve as a student teacher, right? That's sort of obvious. But they don't necessarily have it built in for English where you actually have to uh, maybe go to a career center uh, to learn how to get uh, uh, a faculty position. It's kind of like, it's just understood if you're going to become a teacher, you go find a faculty job, right? And so that's no excuse. It's just that there are certain majors where like your business majors, your science majors, those types of majors have, it, it's so very well structured that if you don't have a job or you don't have a connecting uh, opportunity, then that's really on you. Whereas in other majors, like your arts and your arts majors, your English, those types of majors, those types of majors tend to basically throw you out into the sea and you find your own way, right? And so going back to uh, the finances and going back to the initial warning that if you don't have... Um, if you continue to buy clothes, you won't have any savings when you graduate. And mind you, my mother did not sit down and help me to really, truly understand it. I mean, you're trying to talk to a 16-year-old, 17-year-old, 18-year-old uh, about finances. It would benefit the parent and the child to sit down at the table, talk about it, go through a plan, uh, what you're going to do after you graduate from high school, what kind of apartment you're going to get, what kind of job, sit down, versus, okay, you got to uh, you got to get out of here by, by a certain age, or you got to go, or you got to do this. They push you out too fast. Again, that's no excuse. But if you look at uh, that part of parenting, Waiting for perfect conditions, waiting waiting for perfect conditions could apply there too, but I don't really want to get into that too much. And so the finances, it took me having to become homeless, and I don't think you have to become homeless to learn a lesson. 
I don't think you have to make a whole bunch of mistakes to learn a lesson. The lesson is already there. The lesson is already available for you to learn. You shouldn't have to fail classes repeatedly to learn a lesson about the importance of learning what you need to learn to pass the class. No, the class is there for you anyway. So when you think about do not wait for perfect conditions, whatever it is that you're interested in doing, it's always going to take some form of planning anyway. Don't make hasty decisions because then the hasty decision could be a form of procrastination, which would then later hinder you from learning what you need to learn. But the waiting for perfect conditions is it. It, it it is helping you understand um, the the importance of planning whatever transition you are moving from. You're moving from one state of mind to the next, right? One f- financial condition to the next, one understanding to the next, one one belief system to the next, uh, because if you don't, you you will find yourself taking anything. You will you will find yourself having to move in with people who actually plan. And then you find yourself criticizing those very people who saved their money and did well and did right by themselves, criticizing them when you actually should be learning. Now, I was never much of a person who criticized someone. I was always very much open to learning. But the openness to learning should be followed up by action. And so if you don't follow it up by action, on some level, it is a criticism of that person. So today at 48 years old, I have a savings. Actually, I have two sets of savings. I have a full-time job. I'm back in my own apartment. I do have clothes in the closet, but if something should happen to me, I can, uh, if my apartment burned down or, or I had to move or something like that, that I can go to somewhere and not be homeless, or I don't have to move in with someone or anything because I have the funds. And so whatever I should have learned when I was in my 20s, I'm now forced to learn in my 40s, which is not a bad idea in the sense that I can turn it around before I get to my 60s. But it shouldn't take you getting to your 40s to learn something that you should have learned in your 20s. It shouldn't take a person being in their 70s, 80s, and 90s having to work a a job at Walmart and stand on their feet for eight hours uh, when they should have planned somewhere in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. If you're taking that job because you want something to do, but you still have a retirement, that's completely different. But if you're taking that job because you didn't have a retirement, you didn't go to college, you didn't plan well, and now you are in your 70s having to work that type of job, then that that says that you waited for perfect conditions somewhere. Maybe you were waiting on someone to marry you or you were waiting on someone, okay, if I can just win the lottery or if I can just do this or if I can do this, and you did all these ifs and the ifs turned into years. And now you are confronted with, with the biggest if how can I take care of myself in my old age? That's the that is the most huge if there, because you can't always depend on your kids. You can't always depend on the fact that you can go out and go get a job. Your money making years can be over after a certain period of time in your life. You don't have the same strength and energy that you had in your 20s and your 30s. So if you have that, if you're listening and you are a young person now, you plan in your 20s, you uh, manage in your 30s, and you begin to reassess in your 40s so you can plan for your 60s and on so that you are not, you're not losing money, you have savings, you also are not giving your money out to people, you set financial boundaries, you cut down your costs, you don't have too many credit cards. If you feel like you need to still have a credit card, you manage your finances, you manage you, and you don't wait for perfect conditions. So this is Favors Mentoring School. Do not wait for perfect conditions. Visit ReginaWhyFavors.com for more tips. You can click the mentoring tab. And then also visit the Amazon store, Amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Regina Y. Favors. Thank you very much for listening.